Non-central location measures are also a type of descriptive statistic, but it gives us a different picture of the data as opposed to measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion or measures of shape. And non-central location measures is often used in research where people are interested in finding out about inequalities in society. For instance, when we speak about the earnings of the top 5% of the population or the earnings of the bottom 20% of the population, those types of figures are often obtained using non-central location measures. measures. So there are different types of non-central location measures. Quartiles means that we're dividing our data into quarters or into four equal parts. Quintiles means that we're dividing our data into five equal parts. And deciles mean that we're dividing our data into ten equal parts. You can divide the data into many different parts, but these are the most common. So to get to a quartile, it simply means that we're dividing our data into four pieces. So suppose that our data set is a full 100, it would just mean that we're dividing that 100 by 4, and that gives us 25. For quintiles, we're just dividing that 100 by 5, that gives us 20. And for deciles, we're dividing our 100 into 10 pieces. If you want to calculate the first quartile of our data set, that means we want to know which data values constitute the first 25% of our data set. To do that, we use the following formula. We divide that 25 by 100. In other words, we convert it to a decimal, get 0 0.25, and then multiply it by n plus 1. We'll always use this formula, whether we're working with quartiles, with quintiles, or with deciles. If we had said that we want to get the first quintile, we divide this 20 by 100 and get 0 0.2 in plus 1. Okay, so let's continue with the first quartile. So that is 0 0.25. Our sample size here is 15. So that'll be 0 0.25 multiplied by 15 plus 1. That gives us 0 0.25 multiplied by 16. That gives us 4. That means the fourth data value in our data set is where the first quarter is. So we can go to our data set and count to four. That means nine is our first quartile. In other words, this is the bottom. This is the first quartile of our data set. This is the bottom quarter and this is the top three quarters of our data set. In other words, the first quartile separates the bottom 25% of our data from the top 75%. If we're interested in finding the second quartile, we would multiply this by 2, that gives us 50, divide that 50 by 100 and get 0 0.5 in plus 1. That's 0 0.5 multiplied by 16 and that gives us 8. That's the 8th position in our data set. So now we can go back to our data set and count to 8. So it's this value over here, 16. So what the 16 does is it divides the bottom half of our data from the top half of our data. The second quartile is also the median of the data set and that is why we've been using this formula to calculate the median. If you were interested in finding the third quartile of our data, we'd have to multiply this 25 by 3, that gives us 75, and convert that 75 into a decimal, in other words divided by 100, that gives us 0 0.75 in plus 1. That gives us 0 0.75 multiplied by 16, and that gives us 12. 
In other words, our third quartile is at the 12th data value in our data set. If we go back to our data set, we see that that is 33. So what this 33 does is it separates the top 25% of our data set from the bottom 75% of our data set. One more thing we can calculate using quartiles is the interquartile range. The interquartile range is simply the third quartile minus the first quartile, but you need to use the actual data values and not their positions. In other words, the third quartile was 33 minus 9. That gives us an interquartile range of 24. These ranges also give us information about percentiles. So this first quartile is also the 25th percentile in our data set. The second quartile is the 50th percentile in our data set and the third quartile is the 75th percentile of our data set. Sometimes when we want to calculate a quintile or a quartile or a decile or a percentile we don't always get a whole number for the position. For instance, suppose that we're asked to calculate the first quintile in our data set. So quintiles means that we're dividing our data set by 5. That means we're getting 20. That would mean we convert that 20 to a decimal. In other words, it becomes 0 0.2 and we multiply it by n minus 1. The number of observations here is still 15, so that is equal to 0 0.2, 15 plus 1, that is 0 0.2 multiplied by 16, and that gives us 3.2. So the first quintile is somewhere between the third data value, in other words 8, and the fourth data value, in other words, 9. But we can't tell where exactly it is. So we need to add another step to this calculation in order to calculate that first quintile. So what we do here is we take the decimal from this three point, from this value, this 3.2, and we take it into the next calculation. So we say it's 0 0.2. And then we multiply it by the difference between the third and the fourth position. In other words, we say for the fourth position minus the third position because it's somewhere in the middle there. That means we're going to take 0 0.2 and say 9 minus 8. That gives us 0 0.2 multiplied by 1. That simply leaves us with 0 0.2. In the next step, we're going to take the 0 0.2 and add it to our final or our last calculation. So we now take the 0 0.2 to our next calculation. And then we simply add it to the third data value. That gives us 8.2. That means this is the first quintile of our data set. So this number has to be larger than 8, but it should also be smaller than 9 because we know that it lies somewhere in the middle there. Let's do another example. Suppose that we're asked to find the eighth decile of our data set. Deciles means we're dividing our data into 10 equal pieces. So that'll be 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. But we're looking for the 8th decile, so we have to multiply this by 8. That gives us 80. We can now convert this 80 to a decimal in order to use it in our calculation. So that is equal to 0 0.8 in plus 1. That is 0 0.8 multiplied by 16. 
that gives us 12,8. What this 12.8 is telling us is that this eighth decile lies somewhere between the 12th position and the 13th position. In other words, it's greater than the 12th position, but it's smaller than the 13th data value. So now we can go to our data set to find those values. It's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. In other words, the eighth decile is greater than 33, but it's smaller than 34. And to find this value that's in between these two whole numbers, we once again take the decimal from this calculation, which is 0, 0,8, and we multiply it by the difference between the 13th position and the 12th position. That gives us 0, 0.8 multiplied by 34 minus 33. That is 0, 0.8 multiplied by 1 just leaves us with 0 0.8 so now we take the 0 0.8 to our next calculation which is adding it to the 12th position which is 33 that gives us 33,8 in other words the eighth decile of our data of our data set is 33,8 it's greater than 33, but it's less than 34. And once again, these can also be expressed as percentiles. The first quintile is also the 20th percentile of our data set. And the eighth decile is also the 80th percentile of our data set. So whether the calculation or the question asks you to calculate the 8th decile or the 80th percentile, remember it's the same thing. You just divide it by 100 in order to get your, your decimal over here. Or whether it says the first quintile or the 20th percentile, it's the same thing.